So the big secret of the bank is that they have people convinced that they have money to loan when in fact they are simply a bookkeeper facilitating the creation of money. Currently money is created typically when the borrower goes to the banker bookkeeper for a loan and the bank gives the borrower a credit line uh, backed by collateral a large credit line backed by uh, the mortgage of a the deed of a house for instance so if Bob wants to buy a house from Tim he's given this credit line of debits and credits and the credits are transferred into Tim's account and Tim gives the bank the deed to the house Bob lives in the house uh, now there was money created okay corresponding debits to credits this is now money in circulation that did not exist before uh, Bob essentially borrowed a house from Tim not the bank uh, assuming Tim uh, wants to buy another house maybe from Chuck he can transfer the debt from Bob to Chuck conveniently Bob doesn't know who Chuck is but Bob has basically borrowed from Chuck and now Bob at his job proceeds to extinguish the debt by capturing credits from Chuck or whoever Chuck transferred the debt to by a transaction and meanwhile the parasitic banker is accruing debits to Chuck's account over time so now now, now that now Chuck or I mean the <laughs> Bob has to sell something to the parasitic banker in order to extinguish his debt and as this debt is extinguished the cash is extinguished it is no longer in circulation so as this cash is extinguished and leaving circulation if the parasitic bank does not facilitate the creation of new cash with new loans at the same rate that this cash is being extinguished uh, then the money supply shrinks and we go into a depression and if you know exactly when that's going to happen you are going to be able to play the market very effectively and now the reason that the parasitic bank is loaning large lumps of cash to certain individuals backed by collateral is to give the illusion that the bank is risking something in this process uh, that therefore they can justify adding compounding interest to the borrower's account when they didn't loan you anything they just gave you some IOUs to borrow something from somebody else we call it a purchase because the debt can conveniently be transferred from person to person using a generic IOU currency so the solution 
to creating a public IOU currency that is not controlled by a private bookkeeper is to create a public currency that's controlled by a public bookkeeper who makes an administration fee for keeping the books not compounding interest and the way they would do this is by giving every producing member of the public a small credit line every producer that wants one of the public cash that is not backed by collateral and has no accruing interest associated with it and does not have to be extinguished let's say Bob buys something from Tim now Tim's got extra cash Bob does not have to extinguish that debt until he leaves the market leaves the country or uh, retires and now you have a consistent cash supply that's not expanding and contracting uh, creating booms and busts and no private parasite profiting off of the creation of cash so all outstanding loans to the bank currently should be extinguished all debt currently with the bank <coughs> by payments directly to the public bookkeeper uh, the interest on those loans should be stopped the, the people with current loans from the fraudulent bank uh, should just pay back the principal to the public bookkeeper that's how they fulfill their debt to the rest of the society and new cash should be created in order to expand the cash supply where we have a booming economy through the facilitating of small loans to a lot of different producers as soon as someone enters the job market they get a small loan uh, regardless of uh, their stature in life what they have now you're gonna have full employment and with with small loans you're gonna have minimal risk of defaults and uh, thus uh, creating a dilution of the cash supply uh, now we have an unequal debits to credits that's inflation uh, but with small cash loans you're going to minimize that so transitioning from this current fraudulent system of private parasitic bankers to a non-fraudulent system of uh, creating public cash is going to be kind of tricky it's going to involve uh, the transit uh, the transfer of all money in savings accounts to checking accounts uh, possibly temporarily uh, government controlled all conversion of uh, bonds and banks and government bonds to cash based on uh, the principal that was paid for those bonds by people that legitimately earned the money to buy those bonds so once the uh, public bookkeeper now takes control of the creation of cash through small credit lines given to all the producers that want one you need uh, someone to handle a checking account and a way of pooling resources and that of course would be done through your private broker uh, 
your private broker would handle your checking account. People refer to banks having 100% re reserves as a solution, but of course, if a bank does not have the ability to create cash, facilitate the creation of it, uh, and use only what it has, risking what it has, it becomes a brokerage at that point. So let's just call it what it is, a private brokerage. So through the commerce of the people in the community, the pro uh, producing community, some are going to uh, earn extra cash and put it in their checking account at the brokerage. Uh, generally, the uh, people that uh, earn extra cash would be the older ones in the community, the people that are in debit, public cash debit, will be the younger people in the community. Um, so these two are in Bob's checking account and these two are in Tim's checking account. And so let's say Chuck wants to borrow to buy a home from Tom and of course Bob and Tim would like their money to grow so the broker uh, draws up a bond with Chuck's name on it and uh, trades that to Bob and Tim for <coughs> the money which is given to Chuck to buy a house from Tom the, the broker used money that Bob and Tim earned legitimately and when Chuck ultimately captures money in his commerce to give back to the broker and of course he needs one more he's selling his goods and services to Bob and Tim and Tom for money that he's giving back to the broker to buy back the bond plus on the, the, the principal that he sold the bond basically for plus an extra amount for interest which is then given back to Bob and Tom Tim <laughs> Uh, anyway, you get the idea. And then uh, the same would go for business loans, except you would create stocks uh, and the, through the broker, the entrepreneur would trade stocks for money that was legitimately earned, that people are risking. Of course, if Chuck dies or something, this bond becomes worthless Bob and Tim lose they the, the risk is not collectivized like uh, it is with our current system at the expense of having a private parasitic banker control the world and of course if Chuck dies he is going to default on his public cash debt but it was only a small loan uh, thus not really affecting the cash supply that much uh, there would be minimal amount of inflation uh, through defaults and possibly somebody Chuck knows or his progeny would uh, fulfill the debt and have Chuck's name written off the book that would the public bookkeeper 
would be keeping. Uh, and of course, assuming Chuck does not die, uh, the bond that he sold, that he basically bought back, would be extinguished. So the private broker has the ability to uh, create stocks and bonds uh, that ultimately can be extinguished. Uh, but uh, he does not have the ability to create money, so to speak, like the private banker does now. And he doesn't have the ability to extinguish money, uh, thus contracting the cash supply, causing the bust cycle. So, essentially, we've eliminated the bank as we know it all together. And now you would uh, relegate the term bank to nothing but a storage unit of precious metals and safe deposit boxes like it's supposed to be. Uh, the word bank implies a place to store something.